Hey everybody, this is Nathan over at Body Balance Physical Therapy. I just wanted to hop on today and I wanted to kind of discuss some, some back issues um, that tend to walk through our door quite a bit and um, all kind of having to do with what they've been told about what's going on in their back. Um, we get a lot of people that come through our doors and say that, you know, my, I've been told I've got facet degeneration. I've been told that my, my discs are degenerating. I've got degenerative joint disease, degenerative disc disease. I've got a bulging disc, I've got protruding disc, you know, all these terrible sounding names for diagnoses that don't really add to a good psyche as far as, as what we perceive our back pain as. And so um, there's a couple of good research studies out there that, you know, they're, they're about five years old now, um, but still very relevant for, for today's population as far as um, the amount of and the percentage of people that actually have some of these injuries or some of these diagnoses that don't even have pain. And so there was a, uh, there was a study done um, by, in the American Journal of Neuro Neurological Radiology. Sorry, that was a mouthful to get out of. But basically what they wanted to see, they wanted to see some degenerative spinal images on asymptomatic patients. And so I think it was what they took, is they took about 360 people off the street to say, hey, do you have back pain? Well, no, all right, hey, do you mind if we do a, an MRI on your back and then see what we see? And they're like, yeah, sure. So I uh, took 360 of these people and ranged from all the way from people in their 20s to people up in their 80s. Um, and what they found was actually pretty staggering. I mean, you wouldn't really think, you know, you think about people, oh, I don't have any back pain, so I must not have any of these issues that some of my friends or other people that I know are having. Um, so I won't go through all these numbers, but I'll kind of point out and highlight some dirt, certain things and what the trend tends to be. I'm sure if you can see it, and that's why I really want to post, and I'll post a picture of, of the stats of it, um, but also the full article if you guys would like to read it. But basically what we're kind of looking at is we have disc degeneration, loss of disc height, disc bulges, protrusions, uh, for set degeneration of spondylolisthesis. So some, some pretty common uh, things that come through our door. Um, and what you'll tend to find is, and these, remember, these are all asymptomatic, so they don't have any symptoms, they don't have any back pain, they don't have any weaknesses or loss of sensation or anything like that. Uh, what we're finding is that as people age, that these percentages get higher. So, you know, this is just a random amount of people that don't have pain, but they're coming through and they are actually presenting with some of these issues that a lot of people come through our door have. And so if we kind of look at, I'll just kind of come out here with disc degeneration. So a lot of DJD or uh, DDD, um, you know, somebody that's 40 years old, that 68% of those people that were in their 40s had some sort of degenerative changes in their discs. Um, and, you know, we have up to 60 year olds, 88% of people had some sort of degenerative changes in their disc. And then we get into our 80s. 96% of people have degenerative changes that do not have pain. We come into a disc bulge. People in their 20s, 30% had them. People in their 30s, 40% had them. 40s, 50%, 50 60%. So the trend is as we age, we tend to see some of these changes. And I don't want to say that they're normal, but we put some pretty common wear and tear on our body throughout the things that we do, whether it's back when we're younger and we're doing things that we shouldn't have done, or just the common repetitive stresses that we're doing, whether it's sitting down or, or stresses at work and things like that. We're putting some, some pretty significant stresses on our back that can cause some of these issues. And so I don't want the goal of me telling you guys this isn't to say, well, you have this that you need to come and see us because that's the only way that we can fix it. You know, some of these things were really not gonna change. And I'll kind of go into another study here in a second. But, you know, once we've kind of got some worn down things, we're not gonna be able to change that. But it's not to say that that's the reason for your pain all the time. You know, a lot of people, the times that, you know, you go in, if, if you go into your doctor and you have back pain, you're gonna go in because you've had it, you know, just recently or as a cute bout or for a couple of weeks, maybe even a month or something like that. Um, but you can get these MRIs and x-rays very regularly until you start to have pain. So, and then you go in and then we start to see all those, but you know, I believe that we didn't really necessarily, you know, just have this sudden acute change more than likely over the course of that one to two weeks or, or month that you've been having your pain. I'm, you know, I'm looking at the stats here and I'm saying that there's a pretty good chance that, you know, maybe you have a bulging disc now and you're 60 years old. So we're talking 69% of people, but who's to say when you were 50, you didn't have it, but you didn't have pain when you were 50 years old. So, so I say that and to say that maybe that's not the reason for your pain. Maybe there's something else that, that we don't really think about. And then when we dive deeper into what actually you've been doing over the past few times, like, oh yeah, well I, 
I think I have been trying to do a little bit more of this, or I've added into this, and maybe we've been doing a little bit more activity that, that maybe our back hasn't been able to take on, or maybe we've been sitting in an awkward position, or sitting too much and not being too active. So, so that's kind of the whole reason I wanted to share some of that information was because, you know, maybe you do have a, a degenerative disc, or maybe you do have a, a, a disc bulge or something like that, but you're not alone. There's a lot of people that don't have pain to have it too. So I don't think we should always jump to surgery as that number one, you know, treatment intervention. That there's a lot of things that we can do here that can help you get to being more asymptomatic and not having pain while still having some of these issues because I don't feel all the time, and this is all the time, that sometimes this is really the issue that, that surgery is what needs to be, you know, the, the main thing that we need to do to fix it. But I think that there's other options that we can do. We can take more of a conservative approach to not be able to go and get surgery to get some of this stuff taken care of. And so, um, so yeah, so like I said, I'll post this information, but you know, I kind of put down here, if you're 60 years old, you know, 88% of people using that study have some sort of disc degeneration, 67% have decreased disc height, and 69% have some sort of a disc bulge. Um, that may or may not be the source of your pain. What we do here at Body Balance and, and just as physical therapists in general, is we're here to tease out and figure out exactly what's causing that pain and figure out how we can get rid of that. And so um, I was kind of talking about how some of these things may not heal themselves and I want to touch base on this other, other study about actual spontaneous regression of lumbar herniated discs. So there's different levels of disc herniation from, you know, just a little bit of a bulge to where the nucleus of that, um, that disc is actually starting to protrude back into the annulus or, or the, the casing for it. And then sometimes it can protrude all the way out and be into our spinal column or there can be the point where it actually breaks off and floats in our spinal column. So that's, that's just kind of the difference between all these. And you know, sequestration is the worst. So that's where we're actually getting some of that, the, the contents of that disc to break off into our spinal cord. Um, there's a 96% chance of that regressing on its own spontaneously. And for extrusions, there's a 70%, so that's where it kind of pushes back out into it, where we get protrusions, which is where it pushes into the annulus, which is kind of the, the fibrous ring around the nucleus of that, um, that disc. Those will go and spontaneously regress 41% of the time. And bulges, you know, only 13% of the time that they'll start to regress. But then we kind of draw back to this, and the people with disc bulges, as we start to age, more and more have them that are asymptomatic. So it all kind of comes full circle. But, um, you know, your back can get better on its own. But when we are trying to get better, we have this misnomer that I need to really eliminate all my activities. And that's probably the last thing we should be doing because that's going to allow us to get weaker and weaker. So we need to figure out, and that's what our job here is to do, is to figure out what we can do to scale your, your activity down to a point that's tolerable but that we can actually maintain and start to build up some strength while getting rid of some of your pain. So um, I thought that those were very relevant to today because I get lots of people that come in that have back pain and they've been told that they have one of these certain diagnoses. Well, all these people that haven't been told that they have that, they get an MRI and they have it and it hasn't really bothered them yet at all. So, um, so yeah, so I just wanted to share that information with you. I'll put some of these numbers down in the comments below, but if you have any issues like this or you've been told this before and you're not sure what to do about it, come and see us. We want to come, we want to help you out. We want to try to get past this and get you back into, you know, the asymptomatic category where, yeah, you maybe have one of these issues, but, uh, you're not having any pain associated with that. So, um, go ahead and give us a call over here. If you have any issues, you can go ahead and, and, and like this or like our page to kind of stay up to date with more information like this, uh, that I just kind of came out with. Um, but also if you have any questions, you can give us a call or you can send us a message through Facebook. Um, and we'll get right back to you. So I appreciate your time. Thanks for listening and, uh, hope to hear from you guys soon.